Hi, this is Travis, back with another video today on a pretty nifty product called a Flex Bar. Uh, this is a little device made by TheraBand, and you may recognize that name. They're the company that makes a lot of the bands, those thick kind of ribbon style that are used a lot in outpatient ortho offices. This is a lesser known product. Um, for some reason, it's never really left the rehab arena, but it's a pretty simple device to use, uh, actually, once you've kind of gotten used to it and played around with it. Uh, you can get them on Amazon for like $20, $25. Um, as usual, I'll put the link at the bottom if you want to find this thing. Um, and I definitely recommend it for those of you who have some weird little wrist and elbow type of pains. Um, obviously nothing major, but just kind of those little nagging things that hang around. Maybe you notice it when you're doing curls or doing push-ups at the gym and those types of things. Um, I've had a lot of success with it, uh, not only myself personally, but in other patients as well. Um, sometimes somebody would bump into me that wasn't necessarily a patient of mine and they'd say, hey, I got this weird elbow thing, what should I do? And many times I would just say, hey, look, get one of these flex bars, and if you don't get any better in a couple weeks, come back and see me. And a lot of times they would follow up and say, hey, look, I actually don't have to get, you know, come back and see you. Uh, I got this thing and I'm better, so thanks a lot. And I'd have to say I've had pretty similar success in myself. And there's quite a few movements you can do with this thing. Um, I'm going to show the ones I consider the more bread and butter movements, because some of the things on that brochure are not totally clear. And there's a few things I haven't really had a lot of success with. So I'm going to try to give you the more, you know, meat potato exercises with this today. And then for those of you who want to hang around until the end, I'll show some of the more uh, nuanced variations um, that can be somewhat helpful. So we'll go ahead and jump right into this. And so a couple movements I want to start with are pronation and supination. Okay, so supination means turning your hand this way. Pronation just means going back the other way. So supination is going to be like this. And this is how to do it with two hands. Um, I'm actually a fan of doing both sides, even if you have a, a good side and a not so good side, um, just to kind of get a, a frame of reference and you, you know frame a comparison. Um, so that's supination, and then this is pronation. Okay, but if you did want to work one side at a time, you can do that as well. Okay, so this would be one way with one side, flip it over, and then you can do the opposite way for the opposite side. Okay, and it's a little stronger. Now, it isn't a bad idea, though, to do the same thing just to kind of test your strength. So, for instance, if you can do a whole bunch of these, you know, this is going in, back into pronation with one hand. If I could do, say, 30 of these, no problem, and I come over here and I'm barely getting 10, well, that would definitely indicate you want to spend some more time on that movement, you know, in that direction. And so, you could either give it an extra set, you could try to do some extra reps each time you're doing it, or maybe give it a double dose. So, maybe later on in the day, like, you know, space it out. Uh, but maybe later on in the evening, if, you, if you're doing this in the morning or the afternoon, you know, give it another round in that direction you're having some trouble with, if you are, okay? So once again, that was supination, and this is pronation, okay? And that's how to do it with both hands. Notice how my elbows are also stabilized on the table. Um, I think that's not a bad way to do this, because otherwise when you're out in space, people tend to move their shoulders more, and so sometimes just having it planted on something is a little bit easier to just kind of dial it in on the forearm. That way my shoulders are not really moving around as much. Now that said, for some of you, you can also play around with the angles a bit too. So for some of you, it might be a little more painful down here, but if you come up here, all of a sudden you can do it a little bit easier. So that's totally fine to do it that way. Um, the main goal with this stuff is to kind of just shoot for that muscle working sensation, not necessarily going for a lot of pain. Uh, some of you who've had long standing like tendonitis, more what we call tendinosis, um, there may be some pain, but it really shouldn't be like killing you. Um, so that's the pronation and supination, okay? So once again, that's supination and that's pronation. And this is how you can do each one side at a time, okay? Going into the next movement, we can work on what we call ulnar and radial deviation. So for that, you're going to basically take your pinky kind of down towards your forearm and that forearm area, that's that ulnar bone, so we call this ulnar deviation, okay? Notice how, again, I'm not really twisting it at all, it's just kind of straight down. After I've done that one, you can bring it back, so I'm just bringing it back towards my elbow now, almost like they're in parallel, and I'm going to bring my thumb area down towards my wrist, and this area is what we, this bone here is the radius, so they call this radial deviation, okay? And again, with these, I don't always recommend counting the reps. Just try to go until you feel a bit of fatigue in the muscle. Ideally, you want to land probably somewhere between 20 and 30 because you do want a little more volume. But more importantly, just try to go until you feel some tiredness whenever that is, okay? Um, that being said, though, again, if there is a big imbalance from one side to the other, you definitely do want to, you know, try to iron it out so you're getting somewhere pretty close from one side to the next.
Okay, so that's ulnar and radial deviation again. Okay, so ulnar is this way, radial is that way. Okay, and then the last one I'm going to show, which I think is really helpful, is the ringing exercise. Okay, so for ringing, you can hold one side still and you can twist. Okay, so this is more what we call wrist flexion on bringing it forward, or you can do wrist extension by bringing it back. Okay, and that's one side at a time. But if you want to make it harder, you can do both sort of simultaneously. So I'm doing extension on this side and flexion on this side right now. Okay. That's going to make it a little bit harder. And then you'd want to repeat on the opposite side. So now I'm doing extension on the right and I'm doing flexion on the left. Okay. And so that's the ring. It's almost like if this thing were a towel. So there's one direction, flip it, and then there's the other. Okay. And again, if you want to emphasize one side at a time, hold it still on one side and then off you go with the other. Okay. So that's pretty much what I mainly wanted to cover today. Just those six movements. So once again, that was supination, pronation, and don't forget again, you can do those one side at a time. Okay. I also want to show radial and ulnar deviation. And then we just talked about the ring, okay? So that's wrist flexion and wrist extension. So those are the big movements that I think are gonna give you a lot of bang for your buck. Um, for those of you that wanna hang around for the encore of this thing, now I will talk about some other movements that you can do that I had a little bit of success with in certain cases, not necessarily as much across the board. Um, so the movement that's usually really touted for this thing is a movement called the Tyler Twist, and that's because of the uh, physical therapist who I think created it. And um, that's a specific movement for somebody that has lateral epicondylitis, which is the fancy name for tennis elbow. And it's just because it eccentrically involves using the muscles that attach to that. And so the way that they recommend doing that type of movement, usually you, you stabilize with one hand. So let's just say this is my bad hand. I take my good hand and I'm gonna twist it and then straighten my arms. And then I, I release it by just relaxing the side that has the pain. So let me show that again. So bad side stays still. So I'm just holding it, take the good side, grab it, turn it like you're almost grabbing up a motorcycle, straighten your arms, and then you relax with that left arm. Okay. And so again, that's just eccentrically because as that releases, it's lengthening there. We call that more of an eccentric contraction. Uh, for those of you who are interested in that, and that apparently helped in like 81% of cases in, in this small study uh, they did looking at people with lateral epicondylitis or tennis elbow. Um, you can reverse that maneuver for a uh, golfer's elbow, um, so they say, and it had some good results there as well. So if you just kind of reverse the order of that, uh, that potentially can treat more of the inner side if your pain is kind of in this area here, which is more what they call the golfer's elbow. Um, so try that stuff out if, uh, if that's kind of more in the location of your pain and see if that might help you. Um, again, I, I've had some degree of success with that, but there, if you think about it though, in theory, when you're doing that ringing, you're also getting some degree of eccentric lengthening there. Um, so the only reason I think you would want to do that Tyler twist instead of the ringing is if it's just too painful for you, for you to do that, you know, that, that part where you're kind of doing the, the uh, what we call the concentric where you're, you know, putting it back and forward as opposed to just letting it kind of passively, you know, lengthen or eccentrically lengthen. Um, so again, that's there for you if, if you want to try it. Um, but I like the ringing maneuver because I think it just, it's a little more dynamic. You kind of get more birds with one stone. Um, so it's less specific, but I think it does a nice job just kind of covering a little bit more bases. So that's that, uh, my two cents in that department. Um, the other things you can do are for your thumb. And so the main ones they show are just kind of thumb flexion. And then you can do what we call, you know, ab and adduction of the thumb. So the way you do flexion is you just hold it still with your palm and you just kind of push your thumb down into a flex position, okay? And then if you want to do adduction, you kind of just make a fist on it like this, and then you're gonna move your thumb this way. So your thumb is gonna go almost towards your, your palm, okay? And that's what we call adduction. And then to do abduction, you take more what we call like a monkey paw grip like this, and your thumb's gonna move now away from your palm, okay? And that's abduction. So these are a little more specific for somebody that had some different types of thumb issues. Um, so if that's what you're up against, then uh, you definitely can try those. Okay, and then the last one I wanna show is more working that 
ulnar and radial deviation, but with this kind of more of a, a pinch style grip. And so you're gonna just sort of pinch one of the ends and then twist your hand down either this way or the other way, more the radial deviation type, okay? And so if, you're, if your issues are more kind of in the finger area, you can try these. Again, these maneuvers, uh, both the thumb and the fingers, are um, can be a little strong in the beginning with these uh, the higher tension, the green and the blue. Um, so you may again want to start, you know, more in that red yellow department and, and see how that goes. Um, then the last one, you know, you'll see in the brochure a lot. They always talk about these oscillation type movements. Um, I've never personally had a lot of success with those. Um, certainly, if you have, if you've ever been in a PT office or you know you think that there's some value to that and it's helped you, then uh, I won't tell you to stop doing it. Um, my two cents is it just hasn't helped a whole bunch. Uh, but nonetheless, I do think this is a really cool device, and certainly for those first six movements that I introduced. So again, I hope, uh, you know, if you're up against any of these weird little, uh, you know, just kind of these small nagging wrist and elbow issues, um, and you're trying to get back in the gym, uh, give this stuff a try. Uh, but of course, you know, don't wait on any of this stuff if you have something going on. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that can masquerade as, as elbow and, and wrist issues that can be, you know, become from your neck, it can be other things. So, so definitely don't hesitate to get checked out if things aren't getting any better. Um, but if you do just have something kind of small and minor, um, this might be able to help you. Uh, I certainly hope it does. Um, try it out, and uh, I hope you have some fun.